Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having an amazing day. Today we are going to talk about the PlayStation VR headset 2. So I've been using this device for the last couple of weeks and I'm going to let you guys know what I have found as I've been using it. To start this discussion off and to kind of provide a means of comparison along the way, I'm going to tell you the three main things that I hated with the Meta Quest 2. The first of those was the tremendous discomfort on your head as you had the headset just sitting there pushing against your face. Second one is the whole time you're playing games. For me, there was just this always constant curtain of blurriness that would never go away. And then the third thing, and this has to do more so with VR technology at its current state rather than with the MetaQuest 2. But for me personally, I would constantly get motion sickness. And that's because even though you can move around to some extent, you're still just moving around with a joystick and your physical body is mostly staying stationary. And that would give me terrible motion sickness. To some degree, I felt as though my opinion of VR headsets would not actually change until the VR technology changed because of that motion sickness. Because no matter what I do, I'm still not really gonna be moving. I'm still gonna be moving around with a joystick. But in comparison to the MetaQuest 2, the things that the PlayStation VR 2 can improve is improved comfort as it sits on your head and improved visuals. So what is the verdict? My verdict, as everyone's opinion of this could completely vary, but what is my verdict of the PlayStation VR headset 2? Did it surprise me and completely change my mind? And the answer to that question is yes, partially it did indeed. So let me run you through the good as well as the bad of the PlayStation VR headset 2. Let me tell you what it did really well and areas that it can still improve on. To get the basic stuff out of the way first, packaging. It's packaged very nicely, it feels very premium. Inside the box, you have the instruction manual as well as any game digital downloads. Then you have the earbuds that attach to the headset, the controllers, and then the headset itself. The headset as well as the controllers have a very modern futuristic design. It looks like it's from Star Trek, very impressive. The PSVR does require a PS5 in order to play, so it is not a standalone headset. It also has a cable that runs off the headset and attaches to the PS5 USB-C port at the front. The wired connection is required. You cannot actually play this unless you do have that wired connection to the PS5. The cable is about 14.5 feet long, so it is sufficient for the most part, but it does limit your movement to some degree. As you're playing, you just have to be aware that there's a wire hanging down from your headset, and you just have to be careful not to get tangled up in it or to move suddenly and yank your PS5 off of the stand. What about comfort? This is one of the most important things. And if you watched my review of the MetaQuest 2, you'll know that I absolutely despised how utterly uncomfortable the MetaQuest 2 was. It put so much pressure against your face. I tried a number of straps to try to alleviate this pressure and eventually ended up with one that had a support in the back and a support on the head. That way it would kind of hold the headset in front of you, but at the same time it would still press against your face. It was still not the most comfortable thing in the world. How does the PSVR 2 comfort compare to that? I thought it would be at least a little bit more comfortable, but I was wrong. It was actually tremendously more comfortable. They did an amazing job designing this. This headset is overwhelmingly more pleasant to wear. I'm not gonna say that it's comfortable because it's hard to say that something like a VR headset surrounding your face is actually comfortable, but it is just right there, just underneath being comfortable. And that is a tremendous accomplishment. When I actually wear it, I very rarely think to myself, okay, I really wanna take this headset off. So my first gripe with VR technology, the comfort, squashed by the PSVR 2. Moving right along to the visual quality, the PSVR 2 displays are 2000 by 2040, and those are OLED displays. They provide 4K HDR visuals, and they go up to about 120 frames per second. For comparison, the MetaQuest 2 had a resolution of 1832 by 1920, and those were LCD displays. The second big issue that I mentioned for the MetaQuest 2 for me was that the whole time you were playing, there was this curtain of blurriness that was just everywhere. Whatever game you played, you could see it. You could see the world around you. It was beautiful, but there was blurriness. It was like you were just looking through just like water. Well, not water, but just this, this blurriness that would never go away. And it made the experience somewhat enjoyable and less realistic. The settings that the MetaQuest 2 provided to try to help improve this clarity was that it had three different settings to adjust for your pupillary distance, and then you could obviously adjust the headset physically on your face. But no matter what I did, I could never improve and get rid of that blurriness. The PSVR 2, on the other hand, has way more adjustments to assist with making the visuals more clear. Rather than having three defined settings for pupillary distance like you did on the MetaQuest 2, instead you have a dial that you can turn and put it at any point along that entire range. 
You have a button in the front to adjust how close the actual headset is to your face, and you can put that far away from your face and still have it supported on your head or close up to your face, whatever your preference is. You also have a knob in the back to adjust how tight it is to the back of your head, and then finally they have a program within the actual software where it kind of examines your eyes and helps you adjust that pupillary distance so that it is positioned to improve the clarity of each game. But they can have all these tools and all this software to try to help you improve clarity, but does it actually work? Is it actually clear? And the answer to that question is yes, it is massively, massively more clear than the MetaQuest 2. When I would be in the games, when I would look around, everything, it wasn't at the level where it was like, oh yeah, this is real, but it was, everything was clear. I never thought to myself, oh, I can't really see because there's blurriness. There's this curtain of blurriness between me and whatever is going on in the game. It was massively, massively more clear. They did a phenomenal job on that. Something else that affects how involved you can get in the game is how much light is seeping in from the outside world. And with the PSVR 2, I did not notice any light whatsoever. When I first got the headset, I thought there might be some seeping in from underneath but there was not. When you're actually within the game, you do not notice any kind of outside light pollution whatsoever. Something else that the PSVR 2 does that helps with this visual clarity bit, as well as just your overall experience in the game, is something that they call intelligent eye tracking. Now what intelligent eye tracking is, is that it looks at what your eyes are looking at, and then that does two things for you. The first is that whatever you're looking at is clear, and then surrounding that, is a little bit blurry and that improves performance for you so that it's not wasting performance on making everything super clear. It only does exactly what you're looking at. Now you don't notice this because obviously whatever you're looking at is gonna be clear and you can't look at something that you're not looking at. So you're never gonna look at the stuff that's blurry. Now it doesn't tremendously make things blurry, but it blurs it just a little bit so you're not wasting performance on stuff that you're not even paying attention to. The other thing it does is it pays attention to what you're looking at to make the whole in-game experience much more accurate. So for example, if I'm shooting an arrow from a bow, you still obviously have to aim in the direction of the target, but I noticed it paid a lot of attention to what I was looking at to make sure I hit the target. And this might make it sound a little bit like it's cheating, but it made the whole experience so much more realistic. Because although in real life I totally would probably not be hitting my target, my arms were doing what my head thought they needed to do, and were pointing the way it thought they needed to point to hit the target. And because I was looking at it, I usually did hit it. So that's another win for the PSVR 2. That makes two out of the three things that I had issues with the MetaQuest 2 completely squashed by the PSVR 2. Let's change gears and talk about the controllers on the PSVR 2. They were very comfortable, very responsive, the buttons were in good spots on the controllers, very futuristic and modern design. The only thing I did not like about them was the battery life. So with the MetaQuest 2, those controllers' battery life, those would last for days. PSVR 2 controllers, they'd start to get low after just a couple hours of usage. So you have to remember to plug them in and charge them. The issue with that is that you have to like actually physically plug them in and charge them. And then once one's done charging, you have to remember to take that out and plug it into the second controller. Now I'm sure there are, or eventually will be, some kind of setup aftermarket that you can buy that you just stick the controllers on and then they both charge. But it is something to consider, not a big issue, but something to be aware of. Let's talk about the system layout of the PSVR 2. And by that, I mean basically your home base when you're inside the VR headset. And this actually has a couple different components to it. Now your home base, is exactly what you might expect it would be. I, when I first got it, thought that it would be something completely separate, kind of like the MetaQuest 2, where it's nothing PS5 related. It's a distinct VR unique home base, but it's not. The home base inside the VR headset is exactly your PlayStation 5 home base. The only difference is that when you're in the VR headset, you can click on your VR games and then they will surround you and you'll be inside the game. But what that means is that everything that you can do on your PS5 with just a game controller and your TV, you can also do in the VR headset. And what that means is that you can play PS5 games on your VR headset. Now they're not gonna be virtual reality games, so they're not gonna surround you, but let's say for example that I wanted to play Elden Ring. I'd click on it and then I'd be immersed into basically the setting, it's just blackness around you, and then there's like a screen in front of you. And the screen itself, you know, looks like a 3D object in front of you, and then on that screen is your 2D 
Elden Ring game or what other PS5 game you want to play. And the cool thing is that you can adjust the size of that screen in that black space in front of you. So I can make a giant screen that's just huge where you have to literally look like this to see everything that's going on the screen for the game that you're playing, or you can make it a nice small game. That's a very cool experience to have, particularly if, for example, you have a small TV screen. Now you can put this VR headset on and you will have a ginormous screen in front of you. Very, very neat. And for some reason, I did not think that they would do that, but that added such a huge quality feature that I find very, very impressive and very, very nice that they added that. One downside to the PSVR 2 is the amount of games that you can play in the library. So at the time of recording this, there's only about 40 games in the library. And of those 40, I'd say that there's only a handful of them that are actually substantial quality games that are worth playing. MetaQuest 2, on the other hand, has many more games in its library, and then you can also open it up to Steam and outside sources so that you can play even more games. My third gripe with the MetaQuest 2 was that despite the fact that you could look around and move to some extent, you still weren't actually moving your legs. You were moving a joystick, which as I said at the time is sort of more to do with VR technology in its current state compared to the MetaQuest 2 specifically. But despite how many hours I played, I constantly got motion sickness and then honestly felt very sick and off and gross the rest of the day. And that made the whole experience ultimately very enjoyable. You might feel very differently depending on how well you're able to get used to that motion sickness and, and moving without actually moving, but that was the experience for me. So did the improved visuals and the improved comfort of the PSVR 2 change this for me? And the answer is it did not change it for me, but it did make it significantly, and by significantly I mean significantly better. The visual clarity and the quality was so much better that the world I was looking at actually did seem much more clear and realistic. And that fact, and the fact that the headset was actually almost comfortable sitting on my head, made it easier to get drawn into the video game. But it still wasn't perfect, I found that I could play the PSVR 2 for about an hour before I started to get to the point where I got sick, not of the game, but of the feeling of being in virtual reality. Compare that to the MetaQuest 2, where I got the same desire after about five minutes to 15 minutes max of playing. So what's the conclusion? What's the summary? What's the verdict about the PSVR 2? Your experience with this headset will vary. The whole technology is largely based on personal opinions and preferences, to be perfectly honest. Some won't get motion sickness as easily, others, like myself, will. And each person will have a different expectation of what visual clarity they should be getting. And each person will have a different expectation of what the experience in general should feel like. For me, this headset is 100% overwhelmingly better than the MetaQuest 2. The visuals are superb, the fit is pretty dang close to comfortable, and the movements and motions within the actual headset are extremely precise. When I play Horizon Call of the Mountain, for example, it was utterly fascinating how I could pick up different objects, like boxes, plates, almost anything, and manipulate that object just as if it were actually in front of me. I could take a container, literally reach inside that container, take out each item individually, and then grab the container, lift it over my head. It was extremely realistic and, and utterly, honestly enjoyable to see that and do that. I've honestly enjoyed playing games on this headset for the last couple weeks, and I can't say that for the MetaQuest 2, which is the other VR headset that I have tried. It truly is an enjoyable experience for the most part, and I definitely applaud and commend the creators of the PSVR 2 for what they were able to accomplish with this headset. So going back to the beginning of this review, my three gripes with the MetaQuest 2. First, the visuals were blurry. PlayStation VR 2 completely knocked that out of the water. They did an amazing job. Second thing is that the extreme discomfort on your head from the headset itself. Again, PlayStation knocked that one right out of the water as well. And the third thing is that being in VR just made me dizzy, gave me motion sickness, and it wasn't quite at the level of reality that my head seems to expect it to be at. And the PSVR did not knock that one out of the water, but they did improve it a good bit. So that being said, do I enjoy playing the PSVR 2? Yes, I definitely do. But it's only going to be sparingly, and when I do, it's going to be the last thing I do before bed so that I can sleep off the motion sickness that immediately comes thereafter and stays for the rest of the day. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, give it a like, consider subscribing, and then I will see you all next time.